24-7, always nourishing our souls. We are here now, dear friends, for our God at home moment. What is the God at home, if you are wondering? It is our conscious effort to invite God onto our sacred temple, the temple where we build our family, where we meet again with the spirits that were assigned by God to be part of our constellation, where we are received as well in a new reincarnation. The home is so sacred that Master Jesus himself engaged in this conscious practice of connecting with God in the space of Simon Peter's home 2,000 years ago. And if you are wondering, how did our master go about instituting the practice of calling God into the home? He did so by engaging in a meeting where he would read the sacred scriptures, engage in prayer, comment on the sacred scriptures, for educational opportunities for the soul and then close with a closing prayer. We too, 2,000 years later, can follow through the master's footsteps. Now with the current context of the earth, dear friends, this practice becomes all the more valuable because as we pray in the book Liberation by Andre Lewis, we learn that as we engage in prayer, the spirit mentors are able to put up signs of enlightenment around our windows. And as we pray, other spirits, the discarnate spirits, who may be in need of an embrace, of a new word of encouragement, come to our homes to receive that word of encouragement, to receive the good news. And in that way, our homes become an outpost of charity in the name of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we engage in, our, in prayer, dear friends, we are fulfilling a universal law law of worship that is also an act of service and of charity of giving of ourselves so it's beautiful that in this current reincarnation we are blessed with the opportunity to consciously connect with god and here at kardec radio our inspirational reading comes from our foundation the Spirit's Book by Allan Kardec. We are precisely right now studying the law of progress, as you can see on the screen, and we are focusing on questions 794 and 795 tonight. And you may be wondering, why is it important for us to study the divine laws? Because as we study the divine laws, dear friends, we are better able to align our will with the will of God. And as we study together, we are blessed with many opportunities to recalibrate ourselves, realign ourselves with God, because the more we know, the wiser our choices become. So how many blessings we are receiving right now from above and to connect with the loving mentors who most certainly are right here inspiring all of us. We shall engage in an opening prayer. Shall we, dear friends? Let us then Close our eyes 
and open our hearts in gratitude to our loving creator who has planned this reincarnation for us feeling this lifetime with opportunities for us to acquire new immortal skills for us to reach new immortal and eternal milestones for us to better comprehend our own divine nature for us to finally connect consciously with the abundant source of love that intelligently guides the universe and sustains the harmony of all living beings it is beautiful dear god that you provide us in this reincarnation with the opportunity to practice discernment and make use of the light of faith at the same time no longer dear loving god do we have to choose between reason and faith because through spiritism we are blessed with both and we pray dear loving god so that the light of faith love and discernment can now be lit in all the hearts that may be in despair and all the hearts that may be feeling abandonment in all the hearts which may be experiencing despair sadness isolation may all the hearts in both realms of life feel your divine light reaching out for them feeling allowing them to feel that they are protected guided and most importantly loved by you we dedicate our prayerful moments tonight to all of those directly involved in the pandemic we dedicate our prayers to those who are dramatically discarnating to all the healthcare workers around the world to all families readjusting to a new reality to all mothers and fathers who are now dedicating themselves to their children in different beautiful manners to all children who are experiencing this different unique circumstances in their reincarnation to all mothers who are about to deliver their babies in this circumstance to all of those who are already elderly in their physical bodies may they receive your embrace of love and compassion may all humanity as one single divine family feel protected and embraced by you dear god may we visualize at this very moment the earth receiving a shower of healing blessings and may everyone on the earth in both realms hear in the sweet and loving voice of the mother of humanity our beloved mother mary that this too shall pass and with your loving permission dear god we begin our gospel god at home 
tonight. And so be it. Hello, Monica. Welcome, beautiful child of God. Hello, Amanda, Andrade. So nice to see you and to have you here in order for us to expand the circle of love and light provided to us by God. Welcome, welcome, dear souls. Now that you're here, let us grow, let us love, let us learn. Together is always better, right, dear friends? Let us move now to question 794 under the law of progress. Allow me to open up the book here, question 794 reads one second now we have it we are now starting a new section of the law of progress entitled progress of human legislation the question reads would the laws of nature be sufficient for the regulation of human society without the help of human laws, asks Kardec. In other words, are the divine laws that are already in place enough by themselves? Kardec asks. And the spirit mentors who guide humanity under our governor Christ say, if the laws of nature were properly understood and if humankind were willing to practice them, they would be sufficient. But society has its exigencies and requires the cooperation of special laws. So the spirit mentors are very direct to help enlighten and strengthen our souls. The spirit mentors in the spirit book speak to the adult inside of us because the adult inside of us can handle the truth. And by handling the truth, we mean can take responsibility for their actions. The adult in us, dear friends, no longer uh, sees themselves in the position of victims. No longer do we see ourselves as those to whom other people do things. We instead take responsibility for our own actions and are very dutiful in the way that we conduct our lives, much like our master Christ Jesus. So to boost our sense of dutifulness as immortal spirits, the spirit mentors working with Kardec never sugarcoat anything and they are very pragmatic and direct in their lessons. And they tell us in question 794, as we just read, that we still need human laws in order to guide us towards divine laws, that we in our level of evolution are not yet completely aware, completely conscious, completely ready to take responsibility for ourselves as per the framework of divine laws. So we need uh, reminders coming from our human societies to help us align ourselves all the more with our sense of dutifulness before God, before ourselves, and before our neighbor, before our fellow beings, before our brothers and sisters. Now, in order for us to understand the meaning of the message the mentors are giving us more clearly. Let us bring their 
understanding of human law and divine law closer to us. We, the mentors of Kardec Radio, would like for us to bring a few examples to help us contextualize question 794 and to help us feel the scriptures, bring it closer to us. We may be wondering, but Carol, I am already dutiful. I don't break any laws. I haven't received any traffic tickets or citations. I've always paid my bills, followed all the rules. I never get ahead in line. I never cut lines. I wait for my turn. I'm good, Carol. And yes, great. If you see yourself already there, fantastic. But there are aspects of divine law, the human law, is not yet aware of, or the human law does not yet encompass, allow us to give ourselves, including myself, examples. In the book, Paul and Stephen, we see a father, Joshadab, and his son, Stephen, as part of the same family circle. The father was a Jewish slave, Joshadab, and he ends up losing everything, all of his material possessions to the Roman Empire. And he decides to seek for justice, to take justice into his own hands and go confront the Roman authorities. At the same time, his son, Stephen, says to his father, don't worry about the material possessions. Let us pray to God and trust that God shall provide for us. If we don't have our land right here, we will find somewhere else to live. Don't worry, father. But the father didn't listen. The father kept saying, I would like to have what is mine. Nobody can take what is mine. Whatever is mine is mine. I will make justice. I feel offended. I don't want them to take what doesn't belong to them. They don't have the right to do this to me. So Joshua Dab, dear friends, took the position of a victim and felt offended, persecuted, and in that way created more trouble for himself by in the end losing even his own life. At the same time, Stephen is sold also as a slave in that narrative and finds joy even at the prison cell, saying that he is ready to serve always, and if God placed him there, there was a purpose. And indeed, there was a purpose, dear friends, because he ended up being a let go of after helping a person who was sick, and ended up in the mention of the way meeting Simon Peter, the apostle of the Christ, and becoming one of the first beautiful spokespersons of the Christ as one of the primitive Christians. And later on, as a discarnate spirit, spirit he is the one who guides Paul in his journey. So it's a beautiful narrative that shows us exactly the difference between divine law and human law. When we follow divine law, like Stephen, our priority is not our own needs 100% of the time. We don't seek to meet our own needs 100% of the time. We devote ourselves, our thoughts, our energy, our feeling to seeking the good 
and offering the good to others. We already are able to see the universal family as importantly as our nuclear family, as Stephen did. If we are more attached to materialism, if we only see ourselves as a spirit that must succeed in our current terms, according to our current societal standards, we may feel as victims. We may think more of our needs. We may feel more threatened by whether we have this or that material possession or not. And this is where despair comes from. Joshua Deb was blinded by despair because he was holding on not to God, but to materialistic possessions. So therapeutic question for us, in order for us to measure a thermometer that we can use to measure whether or not we are already aligning in the vertical line with God, or whether we are more on the horizontal line, placing our temporary human experience at the top of our list, the thermometer that we can use to measure it within ourselves is what is the quality of the thoughts that we are having? Are they more me, mine, myself centered? I, me, myself, and I centered my needs, my job, my family, my car, my home, my furniture, my TV, my wife, my husband, my children, my watch, mine, 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 or are they centered towards others? Meaning, let me see today how I can help. Oh, but Carol, we are in the pandemic. We need to keep social distance. Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. But for the thought and the spirit, there are no limits and no contagion. So with the power of our thoughts, with the power of the internet, we can reach our universal family. So what are the qualities of our thoughts? And I'm asking myself this very question. Are they me, mine, myself centered? Or are they, what can I do to bring joy to others? Are they other centered or me centered? If we could put a percentage, if we could do a statistical study on the quality of our thoughts, what would be the result? In the next 24 hours, let us do this exercise. Because if the majority of our thoughts within 24 hours can be more other-centered, then we are aligned with God because as Jesus, our master, has told us, his entire uh, base, foundation for the gospel, for the good news, is love God above all things and love others as yourself. So if we are having other-centered thoughts, we are more aligned with God and we shall not despair because we are of service. So we are aligned with the divine laws. But if our thoughts are more ego-centered, then we need to readjust, recalibrate ourselves. And if our thoughts are more me, myself, and I-centered, we may feel despair and we may experience what we spoke here on Kardec Radio before, a minion moment. Ah, 
what am I going to do? Ah, what's going to happen with my life? Ah, I'm desperate. Oh, I'm going to lose this. Ah, how about that? Ah, and this. This is where the despair comes from. So what is the antidote for despair and fear? Is to help not only ourselves, but humanity to progress. Right? Absolutely. And before we move on, let us say hi to Rogério. Thank you, Rogério, for joining us on Kardec Radio. Thank you for the opportunity for us to nourish our souls together. And let us think of a couple more examples of the difference between divine law and human law before we move to our last question of tonight. Let's think together. For human law, for example, drinking alcohol is very much accepted. Drinking alcohol. Right now, many moms I know of uh, say, may be thinking, oh, I hope my child goes to sleep soon, very soon. I'm counting the minutes because I have to have my glamorous glass of wine, very glamorous glass of wine. And that is very much socially accepted. It is not against um, human law to drink alcohol. But if we think of ourselves as immortal spirits, we may have greater appreciation for this beautiful physical vest, dear friends. If we read, for instance, I even brought it in today. If we read the book, Missionaries of the Light, by the spirit author, Andre Lewis, through Chico Xavier, we learn how much work goes into the building of our beautiful physical body. Even engineers of the spiritual realm map up our cells for us and accompany the moments in which our pair spirit connects to the physical body molecule by molecule through the gestation process. So how sacred is this physical vest? Right now in the spiritual realm, there are at least three more times spirits who are discarnate, who may be praying for the blessing of a physical body. And we see here in the book, Missionaries of the Light, thanks to the effort of Andre Lewis. Thank you, Andre Lewis. How much work goes into this and how many people are involved in blessing us with this physical body. So when we drink alcohol, although we may feel more relaxed, we are hurting the cells of our body. In the book, uh, No Solar, by Andre Lewis as well, we learn that he is classified as a suicide spirit because he engaged in drinking alcohol socially, and he also had many extramarital affairs making a uh, misguided use of his gen genetic or creative sexual forces. So here's an example of a human law, a practice that is considered socially acceptable and even socially um, stimulated, which is drinking alcohol, but that we learn that according to divine law, it is not um, advisable that we do that. Spiritism doesn't prohibit anything, but spiritism as the light of discernment teaches us the consequences of our actions. 
we are free to choose whatever direction we might want to take we are free to choose how we would like to care for a physical body no one but our consciousness is going to give us the green light or the red light but thankfully dear friends spiritism shows us how we carry on with the consequences of our actions beyond this lifetime we who may drink alcohol uh, on a constant basis may even carry scars in our perispiritual body and in a next lifetime we may need to come back with an organ physical organ that doesn't work uh, perfectly because of the fact that the vibrations that were accumulated from drinking in a previous life now need to be expunged from our spiritual selves so we may come back with a physical body that carries this perispiritual scars and that cleanses these vibrations by not having perfect physical health. So when we drink even socially, thanks to spiritism, now we can stop to think and now we can actually say to ourselves i love myself and i'm going to invest in my health immortally if we would like to invest in our health immortally then we go beyond the human law as presented in question 794 and we look for our eternal harmony which means when we invest in ourselves not only with our material eyes but with a spirit from a spiritual eternal immortal perspective thank you franklin for the gift of your presence Thank you, Monica. It's great that we can learn together. Whoa, you've been sober for two years. Fabulous, Monica. Congratulations for investing on your eternal well-being and eternal health. Because like we said, spiritism doesn't forbid anything. Spiritism doesn't go against anything. But spiritism gives us the light of discernment so that we learn that whatever we do now, whatever we plant in the garden of our souls right now will bring consequences to us later. So do we want to invest in our moral hygiene? We have been talking about physical hygiene quite often because of the pandemic, of course, and physical hygiene is absolutely essential. Thank goodness we have the means in today's society to embrace it fully. But here at Kardec Radio, we are to talk about moral hygiene as well. One way to Practice moral hygiene is to rid ourselves of habits that shall not bring us eternal harmony, eternal balance, and drinking alcohol is one of them. So this is one example, dear friends, as to how human law is not yet completely aligned with divine law. But it is up to us to conduct ourselves in such a way so that sooner rather than later, we are more harmonized. Another example of how human law is the, still a little bit distant from spiritual law is pornography, for example. 
It is very common in today's society, dear friends, for people to share pornographic pictures or movies even on WhatsApp groups. There are groups on WhatsApp of friends that share uh, pictures and movies of pornographic nature just as fun and they quote unquote enjoy it and there are others who even though are they are in a committed relationship they still watch pornography for instance even in a committed relationship thinking that they are doing this to themselves that it's their own body, that they are not bothering anyone or hurting anyone, that it's their own business, that no one should care about it. And human law has nothing to say about this. However, we learn that according to divine law, we can commit adultery by thought. This is in the gospel according to spiritism there is a section entitled adultery by thought so when we watch pornography we are not only losing our own vitality but we are sucking vitality from the people who participate of these movies and we are attracting spirits who are potentially spirits of sex addict, addicts who are vampirizing us as well. So we are feeding a vicious, vicious cycle and we are committing adultery potentially because in thought we are connecting with other minds and we are not fully present for our family at the same time as we lose our vitality. And you may say, Carol, how do you know all this? Here's the answer. Everyone, in this beautiful book, Sex and Destiny by Andre Lewis, Andre Lewis describes to us that when this uh, family, when this husband cheats on his wife multiple times, both by thought and in practice, the vibrations of his uh, thoughts and actions are so animalistic that the spirit mentors have a hard time protecting others in the spiritual realm against contagion and against creating problems for both realms of life. So we see in this book that this kind of practices hurt not only ourselves, but our companions in the spiritual realm. And Andre Lewis describes that the persons who engaged in these practices at the end of their lives became mad, lost their mental balance, and also became physically ill. Why, we may ask? because the physical body is a sponge that absorbs the vibrations that we emanate and the vibrations that we attract. So once again, we have been speaking of health quite often lately. If we would like to maintain health, to boost our immune system spiritually, to attract healthy companionships to us. We shall even think about how we are utilizing our very own sexual forces because we are not alone in the practices that we engage in. Another example, friends, is in the book, again, Missionaries of the Light. In this book, Andre Lewis describes a person who flirts 
with others in the streets of Rio de Janeiro. And he just flirts. So we may think, oh, well, flirting is flirting. In our current society, this is perfectly acceptable. Flirting is flirting. I'm just looking, whatever. But we know through Andre Lewis's account here that this man who is a spiritist and who was meant to go to classes in the spiritual realm during his sleep is not able to do so because the women with whom he flirted come to him during his sleep time and kind of seduces him through his, during his sleep time and he's no longer ready to go to the spiritual realm to learn. So once again, we may think, oh, I'm an adult, I can do whatever I want. Not so much. We learn that as we think, spiritism shows us time and again that as we feel and think, we connect to other minds. And in addition, we project mental images that become living forms, says Kardec in the book, The Genesis, chapter 14, living fluids that influence us and others as well. So let us also, dear friends, practice moral hygiene as we work on our physical hygiene. Let us practice moral hygiene so we get rid of the excessive weights that may cause us guilt and shame and make us more inclined towards sickness. In the book Evolution in Two Worlds, Andre Lewis explains to us that we become more susceptible to physical illnesses when we commit a grave mistake and start pulsating guilt and shame. If we are pulsating guilt and shame, our immune system lowers, and when this happens, we are more likely to even become physically sick. So we see that spiritism helps us understand how divine law and human law have not yet aligned, but as spiritists, as people who are striving to uphold the light of the sermon, we can little by little daily make efforts to align ourselves with divine law so that we contribute for the alignment of human law and divine law together. Once this alignment happens, then humanity shall progress at a much steadier pace. So if we would like to see humanity change, let us change ourselves. And you may say, but Carol, what is the address that I put on my GPS here? You put the address of God, of the divine laws. So what have we learned so far together in our intercontinental classroom here on Kardec Radio? We learned that we can align ourselves with God's laws more if we practice having other altruistic thoughts. Also, we learn that there are practices that are considered commendable currently in our society that don't align with divine laws. So we are being invited by the spirit mentors for our own conscience and ask ourselves, where can I realign so that I myself as an eternal spirit contribute to progress, not only on my end, but on the end of everyone around me. God is counting on all of us, that is for sure. And Monica is saying we need to be closer 
to our father god yes and be less materialistic that's right prioritize the senses of the physical body less and look more towards uh god for nourishing our souls that doesn't mean that we are not gonna care for the physical body because the physical body is a sacred gift but that means that we are not going to put the needs of the physical body as number one on our list always and we are not going to numb the physical body we are actually going to honor the physical body by using it with much respect and we are not going to blame the physical body for our own temporary limitations rather we are going to revisit our priorities we are blessed that through the light of the sermon we can all revisit our priorities for immortality let us now dear friends go to our last question of the evening today our last question is question 795 what is the cause of the instability of human loss and the spirit mentored sensor in times of barbarism the laws were made by the strongest who framed them to their own advantage. It has therefore become necessary to modify them as humankind has acquired a clear comprehension of justice. Human laws will become more stable in proportion as they approach the standard of true justice. That is to say, in proportion as they are made for all and become identified with natural laws. Beautiful proposal for humanity. So when laws are made for all equally, then we are going to be aligned with divine laws. So we know that this is our destiny, dear friends, to be fully aligned with divine laws. And who came to earth to show us how to be aligned with divine law? Master Jesus, what is the password that we need to know if we are fully aligned or not? Charity and love for others. So let us practice, dear friends, to be altruistic. And you may be thinking, hmm, this is kind of tricky, Carol. <laughs> With social distancing, how can I be? more altruistic good excellent vital question how so number one with our thoughts the very act of prayer can be an act of altruism especially if we pray for those whom we don't even know because then we know we can't receive anything in return so it's a truly altruistic prayer how else may we uh, be altruistic make sure that we are spreading love divinely as is proposed in question 795 here how so if we look at our loved ones and our family constellation from an eternal perspective and you may be wondering, what do you mean, Carol? Good question, if, if you're asking that very valid question. If we take spiritism as our guidepost here, we learn little by little how to look at each other from an eternal perspective. For instance, in the gospel according to spiritism, we learn that the role of mothers and fathers before their children 
This is in chapter 14, item 9 of the Gospel According to Spiritism, written by St. Augustine. We learn that the role of a mother and father before their children is to lead them to God. Beautiful. So if you would like to be aligned with God in your role as a mother or father, there's one central task for you to lead your children to God. Beautiful, beautiful proposal. So if now that we are all with our children at home, how much do we talk to them about God? How much do we teach them to seek the good? How much do we teach them to think of others? These are practices that can lead them to God. Because though they are in the bodies of children, we know that they are immortal spirits and that they are under our tutorship temporarily for this beautiful purpose, says St. Augustine in the Gospel According to Spiritism. And now, how, dear friends, may I be altruistic with my partner, with my spouse, for instance, rather than seeking to be served, rather than thinking, hmm, I wonder what my partner has made for dinner. I wonder if my partner has already washed the dishes. I wonder if my partner remembered to do the laundry. Oh no, I'm not going to clean today because I'm working from home. It's my partner who should do that. I'm not going to do it. I'm already working from home. No, not for me. Let them do it. So this is the more ego-centered uh, perspective of partnership. But if we would like to start practicing a more God-centered understanding approach to partnership, then rather than expecting our partner to do A, B, and C, and D, and E, and F on our list, and even guess what we would like them to prepare for us or do for us, we do the opposite. We, in the morning, say good morning to God, and we ask God in our prayer to show us how we can be of service to them. And if we would like our partner, for instance, to say, I love you to us, we shall say it first. If we would like our partner to be more caring towards us, we shall offer care first. If we would like our partner to give more of their time to us, we shall give more of our time to them. After all, mar a marriage or a partnership, dear friends, according to the light of spiritism, is not meant to be a Hollywood fairy tale where we live happily ever after by having someone serve and provide for all of our needs. No, a partnership that is spiritualized is a partnership where we are aware that we are with that person because we have ties that go beyond this life and that we shall help them in their progress. How can we help? According to Jesus Christ, our Master, the best way to help is to be of service. So it's beautiful how spiritism helps us to re-signify our role in the progress of humanity and in the progress of our own area of, of circle of influence. Emmanuel, the spirit mentor of Chico Xavier, 
always reminds us that the most blessed aspect of our reincarnation is our home because this is where God has placed the spirits with whom we need to work the most or whom we need to serve the most. So if we take this perspective, which is actually the perspective presented by the spirit mentor Emmanuel to Chico Xavier, we shall not feel disappointed very often. We shall not feel hurt. We shall not feel saddened by our partners because now instead of expecting to be served, we feel the joy of serving. Instead of expecting to be given to, to receive attention, we're the ones blessed with the opportunity to give them attention. So let us follow, dear friends, the beautiful prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, where he proposes to us, let us seek to understand more than to be understood. Let us seek to love more than to be loved. Let us seek to forgive more than to be forgiven. And where there is darkness, let us be the ones who bring light. Where there is misunderstanding, let us be the ones that bring unity where there is hopelessness let us be the ones that carry out the torch of hope in this way we will most certainly be fulfilling our reincarnatory plan and be collaborating not only to our own progress but to the progress of every one of the beautiful spirits who are part of our network and who most certainly have been part of our network for centuries. So therapeutic exercise for us this next 24 hours. Let us practice looking at our loved ones, whether in the same home or on the phone or through social media as gifts from God. And let us ask ourselves, how may I honor this gift from God to me? How may I love this person more? Shall we? So final therapeutic question for us is how may, let us ask ourselves with regards to each person in our most immediate family circle, how may I love you more? Beautiful proposal from the mentors directly to each and every one of us, God believes and invests in our own loving potential with his, her abundant love. Let us be channels, dear friends, of God's abundant, abundant, unconditional love. Right, Amanda Andrade? We feel the love and the love feels good. And let us end our God at home tonight with a song because our master Jesus is joy of living. And if he were here with us, which we are sure he is in spirit, he would also sing with us. So let us sing in order to raise the vibrations that are already in our hearts to allow our light to shine, shall we? This will be our final prayer. So feel free to sing along if you would like. Here we go. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, 
I'm gonna let it shine, 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 this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, and let it shine. This little light of yours, you are gonna let it shine. This little light of yours, you are gonna let it shine, shine, shine. This little light of yours, you are gonna let it shine and let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of ours, we are gonna let it shine. This little light of ours. We are gonna let it shine, shine, shine. This little light of ours. We are gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, and let it shine. Yay! Keep on shining, dear friends, and many blessings. Until next time, here on Kardec Radio always nourishing our souls. Let it shine. Big kiss and big hug and much love. Many blessings always. Thank you, dear friends.